Now, this is from the University of Chicago, where I happen to be on staff, and that, uh, thank you, and the, the two screens are. Uh, so I happen to be involved with some other doctors, and Dr. Spice should be on this paper, but it's my fault she's not, and then all subsequent papers will have her on her for sure, because she refers some of these people to me, and we work together with these people together. Um, so these are the people who participated in this. And the reason why I'm the person here, let me tell you how this all came about. Um, you know, breast cancer, people get radiation to the breast after they've had cancer. And the breasts get very hard, fibrotic, and stiff. And they inject fat into the breast, and it's been shown histologically, which I'll show you the paper, that the breast changes. The skin thins, it has new collagen formation, more organized, new blood vessel growing. So I walked by and I said, God, my scleroderma patients have all these issues. Why don't I put fat in the hand? So I went to one of my patients, who happens to be here today, and I said, I have this idea. There's no data, there's no study, there's no science at all. I have this idea. You want to try it? And she said, yeah, sure, go for it. So we went ahead and did it, and it worked. And from there, we proceeded to more and more people, and we tried some study to investigate flow and things like that, which I'll show you. But the most important thing is that people are getting better. And that's the key. We're doing hands, we're doing feet, we're doing ulcers, and th people are getting better. And the best part is, most of my patients are women. And when I tell them, I'm going to take fat from somewhere and put it in your hands. They say, oh, God, they love you. Please take as much fat as you want. So I always take a little more fat than I need because I won't use it all. I take more than I need to make things look a little better. Oh. So as you know, the vessels get larger and smaller, and there's vasoconstriction, and there are different aspects of the, the cause of brain house phenomenon. And visual constriction is a major reason. And as, as you heard from the other talks, the same things that affect the vessels in the lungs affect the vessels in the fingers. And the same drugs are effective in the hands, can be effective in the fingers also. So it's not like it's one portion of the body, the whole body is affected. And all, everything that affects the lung can affect the hands too. It's very interesting though, when I was a resident, way back when, that, that my mentor was studying um, arachidonic acid, which is the, a prostaglandin for his wounds of the hand and burns. And that's taken off. Now it's used for many things in the, the, the way we use it in lungs or hands. And the modification we use it, the drugs help the hands. And he thought about this 30 years ago. So next, let's see what I'm looking at here. Oh. So we know we have primary, I always tell people, Renaults is Renaults. But people have primary Renaults, which is very unusual, which people have cold hands. They get cold, they get white, blue, and red, the normal color changes. They're scribe maybe 1862 by Maurice Renaults. But those are very unusual. Most people, they have Renaults as the first symptom of another disease. So they end up with renounce for 10 years, six years, and they go, and they go all of a sudden they have a problem swallowing, or they have dry eyes, or, or the ulcerations. So renounce can be the first symptom of many things that could happen in the future. So whenever I see someone who has renounce and no other symptoms, they go see Nadira. Because she does all the testing, and you find out maybe at a very early stage, before they have pulmonary disease, which is, and they can start treating this early on before symptoms occur and get things to a state where they could be more effective before they have really full-blown symptoms. So we do that. And then there's secondary renounce, which is well renounced phenomenon, which is really related to what we're talking about today, scleroderma. Could be scleroderma, SLE, mixed collagen vascular disease, vascular antifascular lipid disease. There's a whole host of things that can be related to. We would try arthritis even. So anything can be 
in this whole pool, this whole big bag of secondary renowns. And again, you can see other things that can occur. Which again, oh, I don't have the sign up there yet. Here we go. We have fibrosis, pain, cold attacks. People end up with contractures, the fingers get bent down, they can't make them straight. They have ulcerations to the hand, the fingers, the toes. And then they end up with, what happens is the fingers, because of sclerodactyly, the skin gets very tight, they have an early amputation. The fingers get shorter and shorter. But the skin gets tighter, they have ulcerations. It's a recurring symptom. They have tight skin, ulceration, they lose some bone, lose some skin, it heals, they're shorter. And it keeps going on till they have basically have almost numbness, which I'll show a picture of that later on. So protective measures is the first line of treatment. We'll go through this quickly because you guys all know this stuff. But protective, you wear mittens, mittens, not gloves. Mittens are more important in cold weather than gloves. But gloves, the air goes over each finger separately. With mittens, it goes around the hand and keeps the fingers warm. So mittens are key for cold weather, especially like in the winter we just had, are more helpful than gloves. Calcium blocking agents are the next primary line of things we use. It's the first line of therapy. So they have multiple drugs. Then they have topical nitrates, and then we have a whole slew of things that we could use. And this is basically the potpourri of all the drugs. Some of these used for lungs, some, and they're used for hands too. So the drugs you heard before, ACE inhibitors, prostaglandins, all these angiotensin inhibitors, all these things which were used for the lungs have been used for the hand. But when patients are not responsive to this, and this happens quite often with the hands, they get ulcerations and the pain continues in the hands or the feet, and it limits the lifestyle. This is something that affects you every day, like walking down the street, you can't do that because your lungs are bad. With your hands, you get up in the morning, you can't button your shirt, you can't put your zipper up, you can't get dressed. It's very difficult to function. And as Nadira said, this affects only the hands, the whole body. So the face gets affected very commonly in people and they lose the structure. If you look at how people with advanced disease, they have sclerodactyly of their face. Their jaw becomes recessive because the bone shrinks around the jaw line here. But again, fat is something we could use to restore some of the fullness in the, in the face and may reverse some of the disease. And they you see it for people when the mouths are tight, their muscles around the, the sphincter of the mouth get tight. And I've been using fat in there and hopefully reversing some of that and maybe make it easier. But then go to the dentist, the dentist can't help their teeth, which can be affected quite often. But they can't with mouth open, but get their mouth open to see the dentist. So they can be affected. And then the, uh, what side of I have no idea what's going on here. Okay. Uh, and then there's the invasive modalities. Now, I'll go, let me get the whole slide up here. Neuromodulators, Botox. Everyone says, but great, love Botox. Botox is a great drug for wrinkles. But at the same time, although we don't know the exact mechanism, maybe calcium blocking, maybe the vessels, maybe sodium channels, maybe pain fibers, it helps to increase flow to the hand. The problem is, I have to stick a needle in your hand multiple times. And most people aren't really happy with me sticking needles in their hand. I'm very fast, but they don't like it. So that can be, definitely can be a problem. And before I did the fat transfer, I was doing surgical sympathectomy as my next line of therapy. So I do a sympathectomy, which is an invasive procedure, which you must cut the fingers, open them up, divide some of the nerves going to the vessels, which helps improve flow. But at the same time, there's skin incisions, there's scarring, there's fibrosis. It's hard in the skin may not heal altogether, ulcerations. So it takes time to heal and recover. So I was looking for something that maybe we could do to avoid that. And I've not been a sympathectomy in about three years. I've only done either Botox or fat transfer. 
but they, and I'll show you some of the stuff in a second here. Well, back. So the next phase is fat transfer. So after looking at the breast and doing my patient with the one hand, who had really a nice result, and I find that the sine qua non of the good result is when the patient comes back and says, what do we do with my next hand? When they say, you got to do my next hand or my feet, then I know the operation has been a success. So there are studies that show in, in breast cancer patients improved flow, and again, the improved collagen, less thickening of the skin, more regular collagen formation. So there are studies in breast cancer patients who have had their breast biopsy. In the hand, it's a little more difficult to take skin from the hand for biopsies, although I'm sure we're going to do it, but they can end up with ulceration, and you're really, really trying not to make this a problem for them as part of their treatment. So we've had, again, this is the study showing, histologically it was shown that there's an improvement in everything I just talked about in the breast, and the same thing I think is going on in the hand. So, so again, fat grafting is an operation where there's no cutting. I'm putting a needle stick in the hand and putting catheters in through a needle stick so there's no cutting. And I'll show how I instill the fat into the hand on both sides. And the only cut you have is a little cut you have where it's for the cannula where I do the suction to take out the fat. That's only, and there's really no stitches, just a little, a, a, a little strip on your skin and maybe a little binder to hold things tight so that you have a nice result for the suction. But otherwise, there's minimal recovery for this and the pain is very little. So you see here is the hand. It, here's the hand that we're going to do the fat transfer to. And this gives you the amount of fat we put in the hand. We put a certain amount in the back of the hand. Now this is first described for cosmetic reasons. In New York City, they do a lot of this for cosmesis. They make the hand fuller in the back of the hand, they make it a little more youthful. So your hand looks younger, but it's fuller in the back, don't have the veins and the tendons, all the things you could normally see as you get older, so it makes the hand fuller, which is a more youthful appearance. So I use some of the techniques he developed for this, for using for cosmesis, to use it for the, the transfer for the hand for vascularity. And this is the cannula. You see, it's a very thin cannula going through a very small little hole, a needle stick that goes in the palm of the hand and the, in the front of the hand. And we'll also do it in the back of the hand. Now, all these numbers here are double. I've done many more people now, more hands. This was a year ago. And we doubled or tripled the number of people we've done. I do one of these a week about. So it depends if we do feet or the hand. And the results have been very good. Now, there is no magic pill for scleroderma and Renault. No magic pill. One day we'll have a magic pill maybe, but not for the hand. Will it make your hand better? I think yes, and the data shows that. Will it make it perfect? No. But it will make your hand better, so it will be stuck by needles every three or four months. And if we have to repeat it, we can repeat it. No big deal. And you're asleep, and you don't, and you don't have any pain, and you wake up, and it's usually there's pre a pretty good result for this, which I'll show you. Now, you see here, 92% of patients get better. A few people haven't got better, but they really better is a hard definition. If someone went from having 20, 30 cold attacks a day to five or six cold attacks a day. To me, that's a success because I've made their hands better. They're walking around every, every few minutes getting the hand cold and changing colors of pain. They have less pain during the day. And here you can see the next example of some changes here in the hand. Now, the next patient is that she has every possible complication you have for a nose disease of the hand. She has sclerodactyly, shortening, early amputation, contractures, helation changes of the hand. You see a little red spot. It was tablet on the face, dilation of the vessels. 
and she has an ulceration on the back of her hand she had for six months. I did the fast transfer and she healed within two weeks. So again, this is something, as Ndera said, I'm not sure that they need FDA approval for this because is that the insurance companies have been approving this, which I don't know why. I read a good letter. I, I read pretty good letters, but you know, but they've been approving it because it, it, it's padding and it can help with the with the look of the hand and maybe maybe they think that is some fancy thing, but it, it's working and they've been improving it. Now here's a patient with problems with the feet, and then we injected the feet here. You see, this is the result after we did the feet. Now we're looking at some more scientific ways to measure flow. We first we looked at the laser Doppler. And as you see here, the color changes. Dark blue is more severe. And the problem with the laser Doppler is it's very temperature sensitive. So there's a fluctuation in the room when we're measuring the, the laser Doppler, you can change the result. Now here's the result of someone who has a great result with the laser Doppler after we did the fat transfer. And here's a patient who had an okay result, not great result. So is it the best thing to do? I'm not sure. So we'll look at maybe using a, a CT scan, angiography, look at the vessels. But again, it's radiation. So we're looking more at the clinical effects now. Look at alteration healing, pain healing, different aspects of the clinical data because we don't want to give too many re rads, radiation, as a, as a, again, we don't make the, the disease a problem. And this is just some of the data that shows that it really wasn't, we weren't really sure this was effective. And we using the MRA is one way we may go ahead in the future. So again, the results are durable and the majority of patients, and they've done very well. It's safe, straightforward, no cutting, and there's really no downside. We have one patient who's here again, who had pain in her hand, and we had to do a carpal tunnel release, and she got better after we did that. So there are some things, I'm not sure why that happened, but that helped and resolved the symptoms, and the hands got better with the fat transfer. And mechanism, we don't know. It probably is related to the stem cells. There, in the abdomen, there's a high concentration of stem cells in the fat content in the, the, uh, in the, in the lower abdomen. And that's where we take the majority of fat. Um, occasionally, I had to put patients that diet to gain weight. They're so skinny, they have no, no fat anywhere for me to take. So I put them on a McDonald's diet. <laughs> they have fries and Big Macs every day, they put four or five pounds on so they have fat to suck out. <laughs> and I think this is going to be great, great way to treat people with advanced disease which has not been treatable with other means. And this is a great thing for people who don't have any hope. Thank you.